Hello my bestie! I am here again for another uh, medical content, another medical condition to be shared with you. So our content is about tetanus or yung sa Tagalog, tinatawag natin siya na tetano and most widely known as lakjo. pag-uusapan natin kung ano nga ba itong sakit na to, yung signs and symptoms, paano ito nakukuha, yung treatment or yung mga gamot na pwedeng gawin or ipigay, and the prevention, kung paano natin ito maiiwasan. Yun yung pinaka-importante yung prevention. So, I do hope that you stay tuned until the end of this video. And please do not forget to unsubscribe and hit the bell notification and like and share sa ating mga, mga kakilala para maging aware din po sila. So, ano nga ba ang tetano? Ang tetano ay, ayun na nga, gaya ng sabi ko kanina, it is widely known as lakjo. Bakit lakjo? Kasi yung lakjo is one of the most common signs of tetanus. Ito yung tightening of our jaw muscle. So, ito, kapag tumigas yan, alimbawa, ngumanga ka, or what, nagsalita, or what, kapag mayroong tetanus infection, ang nangyayari ito ay tumitiga. So, nakanganga ka lang talagang ganyan. Ah, ayan, dito siya. Yung jaw natin, jaw muscles. And the tetanus is caused by the bacterium called Clostridium tetani. So, yun yung tawag doon sa bacteria na nagkukos ng tetano. Yung Clostridium tetani. And the spores of this bacteria called Clostridium tetani is everywhere in our environment. So, makikita siya kung saan-saan talagang present siya. So, we are highly exposed sa tetanus. And, pwede siyang makita sa soil, sa mga alikabok. The spores can develop into bacteria when entering the body. So, kapag itong spores, halimbawa itong makikita natin yan sa environment, pag nakuha natin yan, ba mayroon tayong cut dito, tapos na-expose tayo doon sa soil na merong spores, pumasok yan sa ating katawan, uh, doon nag-de-develop yung bacteria. What are the common ways that the tetanus could get into our body? So, meron mga ways na or mga pamamaraan para itong ating tetanus bacterium, si Clostridium tetani, ay makapasok sa ating katawan. Sabi, the spores can get into the body through cut or yung broken skin. And usually, Talagang usual dito yung mga contaminated objects na nakahiwa sa atin. Kunwari na pako tayo ng may kalawang. Yung mga ganong instances. Uh, certain break in our skin that includes yun nga, wounds contaminated with dirt. Halimbawa may pumasok na mga kung ano-ano sa cut natin, sa sugat natin. Merong pumasok na feces, merong pumasok na saliva, yung mag-cause ng tetanus. Number three, yung ating burns. Yung burn cases natin, kapag merong mga na paso na part ng ating katawan. Ito pa, other breaks in the skin that caused by uh, incision. Uh, surgical procedure, mga uh, insect bites, pwede daw po yun. Mga superficial wounds natin, kahit simpleng abrasion. Uh, mga infected wounds, yan po pwede yan dyan. And yung mga venous injections or yung mga binibigay na gamot sa ugat, po pwede daw po din po yun. Second most important thing that we need to know about tetanus is the incubation period. Sa medical term, incubation period ang tawag natin dito, pero it was defined as, as the time 
when you are exposed to that illness. Kung kailang ka unang araw na na-expose doon sa sakit na iyon. Halimbawa, ikaw ay nasugatan kahapon, February 27. So, yun yung start ng iyong incubation period. The incubation period of tetanus is 3 hang up to 21 days. So, 3 to 21 days yung pinaka-incubation period na ating tetanus. Pero ang pinaka-average talaga is 10 days. So, from the time na na-exposed ka, February 27, average niya is 10 days. So, bibilang tayo from 27, 20, February 28, March 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, kung halimbawa ay nagkaroon ka ng signs and symptoms on March 9, yan yung ating incubation period. Doon tayo magbibase ng symptoms. Importante din na aware tayo dito. Pero ang pinaka-common incubation period for tetanus is 14 days. Lalo na doon sa mga heavily contaminated wounds, yung mga heavily infected, yung mga ganyan. 14 days daw. Uh, it can range from day 1 to 2 months depending on the severity of the infection. Pero usual talaga 14 days. Ang pinaka-average 10 days. Pero tatandaan natin na 3 to 21 days ang kanyang incubation period. Dito na tayo sa signs and symptoms. So, yung pinakauna, yung lakcho. Yun nga yung sinasabi ko. Lakcho ay tightening ng ating jaw muscles. Tumitigas ito. Usually, sa, nagkaroon ng ganito yung kuya ko. Talagang ang sakit. Ang nakaganyan lang siya. Tapos, parang nahirapan din siya huminga. Kasi yung ano niya dito, nag-constricted. Because of the tightening here. So, yun na nga, tetanus infection can lead to serious health problems including unable to open the mouth, having trouble swallowing and breathing. So, yun nga, as example ko, yun nga, nagkaroon ng lakcho yung kapatid ko na ganun talaga, parang nahirapan siya humiya. Kasi, nag, ano na dito, nag-constrict eh, talaga nag-type yung ano niya dito. So, sinugod namin siya sa emergency room. Pero, matagal na yon Sobrang tagal na nang nangyari yun. Okay na siya ngayon. Other signs and symptoms, meron jaw cramping, tightening of the abdominal muscle, or, or muscle spasm sa ating abdomen. Meron din pong ganun. Pwede daw po yung mangyari. Meron din painful muscle stiffness. nag stiff na lang yung mga muscles natin. Meron din difficulty of swallowing, mayroong headache, and changes to our blood pressure and heart rate. Pwede rin magka-fever kasi nga may infection and sweating. Yan yung mga signs and symptoms. Vaccination. Aside from human tetanus immunoglobulin, meron tayo yung uh, galing sa DOH na, na tetanus injection. Using drugs to control the muscle spasms. Kung aware kayo doon sa tetanus injection na meron sa health center or kahit sa mga private facility, meron silang tetanus injection. Tapos yung pangalawa, yung human tetanus immunoglobulin, yun yung mahal na binibili sa mga mercury, sa mga ibang pharmacy. Uh, yun sa human tetanus immunoglobulin, yun yung skin test. Kasi tinitingnan natin baka may allergy. Pag may allergy, bawal po iyon ibigay. So, yung pangalawa na tetanus vaccination na ginagamit natin widely or practice na sa Pilipinas is yung merong 5 doses. And 0, 1, 6, 1, 1. Ibig sabihin, anytime yung 0, after 1 month yung second dose. Na three dose, ay yung third dose natin after 6 months. Yung fourth dose is after a year and yung fifth dose is also after a year. Kapag umabot ka dito sa fourth dose of tetanus injection, pwede ka nang um, protected ka na for five years. Kapag nakompleto mo yung lima, lifetime naman na po iyon. So, dapat, kapag meron tayong tetanus injection, mas maganda yung 
uh, nakukompleto natin yung lima. Libre lang naman yun sa mga health center, pero sa private facility, alam ko may bayad yan. Usually, kapag may animal bite, may mga cat, cat bite, dog bite, rat bite, uh, punctured wound, may mga abrasion, kapag tinahe yung sugat, may mga infected, sobrang infected yung wound, nagbibigay tayo ng vaccination of the tetanus. Now, let's go to the prevention of the tetanus infection. Ayan na nga, gaya ng na-discuss ko, yung vaccination, isa siya sa prevention. So, kapag may sugat, mas maganda if makomplete natin yung 5 doses na libre lang sa mga health center. Bakit? Because the best tool to prevent the tetanus infection is being updated to our tetanus vaccination. So, mas maganda talaga yung 5 doses is completed. And the Center for Disease Control recommends booster dosage for all ages, lifetime na po yun. So, every time, kahit, kahit naka 5 doses ka na, ang um, sinasuggest ng Center for Disease Control is to have a booster dose, lalo na kung merong serious infection, wound infection. So, throughout life, po pwede yung booster dose. Depende naman yan sa mga doktor natin. Upon history, taking sa vaccination natin. Another prevention for tetanus is good wound care. So, paano natin magagawa yung good wound care na yan? So, kapag ikaw ay may cut, may punctured wound, may infection or may infected wound from the time of exposure for, halimbawa, ngayon nasugatan ka, hugasan natin yan ng maayos through running water. So, gawin natin yan in 15 to 30 minutes through running water, sasabunin natin siya. Yung sugat na yon. any bite, any wounds, any infected na mga wounds, punctured wound, lahat. Running water yan. Sa running water yan, uhugasan natin ng sabon. Pagkatapos, lalagyan ng betadine and then ipapak natin yan. Babalutan natin ng gasa at ititate. Usually, ang ina-advise natin for 24 hours, iwasan muna na mabasa para matuyo agad yung sugat. Pero mas maganda, gagawa natin siyang mabas hindi mabasa ng 3 days para mabilis yung healing. Ang ating pag wound care daily 2 to 3 times up to 5 days hanggang, ma hanggang makita natin na tuyong tuyo na yung ating sugat. Kapag 5 days at basa, basa pa din yung sugat, i-extend pa natin yung wound care natin. Ex as experience, mabilis mag-heal ang sugat kung hindi siya babasain up to 3 days. Pero, lilinisan siya ng betadine at babalutan 2 times to 3 times a day. Okay, for 5 days po yun. That's all everyone. Thank you for tuning in and for watching this content. I do hope na makita or mapanood nyo rin yung iba pa natin mga content. See you again on my next content. Bye-bye. Stay safe people. Um, magpalakas pa rin tayo ng resistensya because the pandemic is still here. The COVID virus is still here. Bye-bye. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.